particular film is very exciting because it's in some ways a summation of everything he's ever done, but it also kind of strikes out into bold new territory. Um, Godard has always been a boundary pushing filmmaker. You know, he's kind of he is to cinema what somebody like James Joyce is to literature, or Picasso is to painting, um, in the sense that he's really pushed the boundaries of the medium. And he has since Breathless in 1960. Um, and what's exciting about this new film is he's still innovating. He's still experimenting. Uh, and in particular, the sound design in this film, it's the most complex, ambitious stereo soundtrack I've ever heard. 7.1 channels of sound, and he utilizes all of them fully. So the film is a video essay. It consists mostly of clips from other films, but you hear voices, including Godard's own voice. You hear snippets of music, dialogue from uh, other films, and all of these sounds are bouncing around you. They're in front of you, they're to the side, they're behind you, and this really goes against uh, the grain of how we're used to hearing films, because most stereo soundtracks are very conservative. Years ago, somebody decided that the way a stereo soundtrack should work is that the voices should come from the front, and then music and sound effects like wind whispering through trees should come from behind you, and that would create an immersive experience. And Godard is essentially saying with this, this new film, why? You know, why can't the voices come from behind you? And it creates a, a kind of an overwhelming uh, sensory experience. Um, visually and orally, uh, it's a very poetic film, and it's something that really benefits from being seen and heard on a big screen with 7.1 channels of sound.